The waves lap quietly at the shore as I walk over between the sand dunes. People talk and laugh. Children play. I take off my shoes and feel the warm, dry sand under my feet. It has been three years, eight months and 27 days since I last stood peacefully on this beach. The warm spring breeze blows the smell of salt water into my nose. I take off my tunic and slouch hat. I sit down. The sun warms my shoulders and back. The first time I felt this in four years. My head is filled with memories. The noises from the battlefield. The guns, the cannons, the screams. I remember sitting in the trench, frightened as shells went off around me. The desperate cries for help. As I sit here on this beach, there is no mud and no blood. There is no more war. There is no more death. The war is finally over. Now it is time for peace. I slowly walk down to the shoreline. I bow my head. Close my eyes. I remember. Hi, my name is Hartnell Dean. I'm a Year 11 student in Stella Marsh College in Manly and I'm talking to Wing Commander Mike Elport. Mike, um, thank you for your service to the Commonwealth and uh, for sharing your story here today. Okay, well I'm delighted to meet you and I also feel uh, privileged um, to be asked to introduce this uh, program uh, saluting the services. To be here along with the, uh, some homegrown veteran heroes. Okay, good. Well, I'm very t happy to take any, any questions you, you, yes. you may have. I'd love to ask some questions. Yeah. Um, so do you have any particular memories from your long flying career that you would like to share with us? I particularly liked and respected paratroopers. <laughs> My name is Tia Anastase, I'm a Year 11 Mossman High School student and today I will be interviewing Barry Spencer OAM. Barry, thank you for your service to Australia and for sharing your story today. What age were you and what branch of the Australian Defence Force did you serve with? I joined the Royal Australian Navy uh, just on my 20th birthday and I spent the next 35 years full service with the Navy and then five years reserve time on completion of that. Hi, my name is Luke McGuire. I'm a Year 11 student at St Paul's Catholic College Manly and I'm talking with Vietnam's veteran Barry Collins. Barry, thank you for your service to Australia and for sharing your story today. Can you please tell us where you were born and where you lived prior to joining the Australian Defence Force? I was born in Sydney and um, I was living at Barrel, New South Wales, um, before I was, uh, when I received my conscription notice. Hmm. My name is Harry Forsyth and I'm a Year 11 student at St Paul's Manly and I'm talking today with Navy veteran Ray Benny. Ray, thank you for your service to Australia and for sharing your story today. What age were you when you joined the Royal Australian Navy and why the Navy? I enlisted at 15 and a half and the Navy was very, very attractive having 
had a number of new recruits from my school area coming back to talk about their experience. And I think I was always a bit of an adventurer and the Navy just seemed to be the way to travel and have a good job. Good afternoon, my name is Kalani Philby. I'm a year 10 student from St Paul's Catholic College, Manly. Today, I will be talking with Army and Vietnam veteran Robert Dodds, um, who has volunteered to share his story with us today. Before we begin, I would like to say thank you, Robert, for your service to Australia, and thank you for lending your time to let me speak with you today. You're welcome. I'd like to start off with asking, what age were you and what branch of the Australian Defence Force did you serve with? Well, I started way back when I was 16 by joining the Reserve Forces. I uh, worked my way through Reserve Forces. Uh, if we go then on to, I joined the Army when I was 21, uh, the regular Army, and put in 15 years. Hi, my name is Harry Hadley and I'm a Year 11 student at St. Luke's Grammar, DY, and I'm talking with um, Vietnam veteran Michael Noonan. Michael, thank you for your service to Australia and for sharing your story today. I understand that you have military service, in fact one of the first nat national service conscripts, and I would like to ask you some questions about that service, is that okay? Yes, sure. So what were the origins and reasons of national service in 1965? The Australian government passed the National Service Act in 1964, which required males of 20 years old to spend 24 continuous months in the Army. Hi, my name is Ben Blakeney and I'm a member at Freshwater Surf Club. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Vietnam War veteran, Sean Rout. Sean, firstly, I'd like to thank you for your service for Australia and willingness to share your story. Oh, thanks, Ben. Uh, Sean, did you volunteer to serve or were you conscripted? I was conscripted, yeah. Conscripted. What age and year was that? A young 20 and in 1970, mid-1970. Nat Janda, I'm a member of Freshwater Surf Life Saving Club and today I'm talking with Navy veteran Lieutenant Commander Tamara Sloper Harding. Welcome Tamara, thank you for your service to Australia and thank you for letting me interview you today. Thanks Nat, it's really good to be here. So Tamara, um, what age were you when you commenced your service in the Australian Navy? Uh, I joined the Navy when I was 18 yeah. and um, I'd known I was going to join since I was about 15 and I got a scholarship when I was in year 10 at school. Um, so it was in the it was in the plans always. Hi, I'm James Griffin. I'm the state member for Manly and parliamentary secretary for veterans in New South Wales. And today I've got the opportunity to speak to Wal Edwards OAM. Wal's turning 104 this November and he's got a rich history and a story that most of us could simply dream of. I want to thank the Department of Veterans Affairs for providing this funding to enable us to tell the story of Wal and other veterans across the Northern Beaches. Well, I was happening to be uh, a little bit older than most people on the 3rd of September 1939. I happened to be 23 years old. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh boy, this is mad, this Hitler and what he's up to and what not. And uh, where's this going to end? Mm. And from then on, you want to know when I was first called up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
because it was three years after that. Well, hello again, my name is Sean Rout. I'm the president here of Harbour Diggers RSL sub-branch. I'll introduce Wal Edwards. How are you going, mate? You've enjoyed pretty, the day. Pretty good, thanks, Sean. That's the way. Uh, just a, a question. I, I'm, I'm concerned, and we are all concerned, about the terrible rate of uh, suicide in our armed forces. And so yeah, I am just, too. Oh, thanks, mate. It, it's, it's a worrying, and the organisations should be stepping up and doing more. Just in the last week, I've heard, two weeks, six guys or six people have committed suicide. What, what's your thoughts on that and how long is it, do you think it can go on? Sean, I, I just don't know. It's so sad to think that so many uh, uh, fellows come back from whatever war is on and uh, they're just forgotten. And, and that's the sad part. And uh, to get readjusted into civilian life after being under, under that sort of a, a, a life, well, uh, nobody knows. Nobody knows what each individual has suffered. Mm. And uh, I, I am uh, terribly sad about the ne neglect that has been from uh, Generally, the, well, people don't know. They don't know what they've gone through. Yeah. But they need help all the time. Okay. Well, um, you're turning 105 shortly, and I believe you're probably the longest serving veteran on the Northern Beaches, if not in New South Wales, from World War II. You continue to serve in many capacities, long after you serve, what drives you to continue to serve and give back to the community? Because I have it in my heart, the sadness. And I just want to reach out to those people that are far worse off than me in my present uh, physical condition. Fortunately, I've got my marbles. I, I don't have Alzheimer's, I, I don't have dementia. And so therefore I can reach out by phone or I'm still driving a car, yes. but <laughs> it's, I've been a bit restricted the last few months in, in uh, going to hospitals. For COVID? Uh, because of the COVID. But previously I've had 26 years, as you know, mm. in uh, trying to look after those people who need looking after as far as pensions concerned, uh, and in dealing with the Department of Veteran Affairs and also in visiting them in hospitals, aged care facilities and wherever they are. Well, mate, uh, we've got to wind up now. Um, thank you for being part of this project and thank you for your continued service to the community here at not only Harbour Diggers but the general community and the veterans community on the Northern Beaches. I thank you and I salute your service. Yes, thanks very much, uh, Siobhan. Uh, but uh, I would like to say to the younger people in life to get a lesson from this idea of what's going on now in COVID. We have been through, well, I have been through the Great Depression, which was after many years when we were poor and uh, we didn't have any money at all and we had to work for everything that we got but the idea in life is if you have things wrong with you you're not the only one you just think don't think of yourself all the time reach out you've only got down go down the street and you'll find someone worse off than you if you've got something wrong with you mm. try and think about someone every day if, when you get out of bed, think to yourself, now I've got a heart, I want to use it the right way. I want to care for someone that's far worse off than me, financially or physically or emotionally. Now I'm going to do it. No good talking about it. Action. The only way to go. Thank you, Wal Edwards. Champion, mate. Did you like that one? Yes, I did. Good. <laughs>